Final Fantasy XV's initial release disappointed a lot of people, including many first-time players and series veterans. The game had story moments that felt either rushed or empty, and obviously this upset a lot of people looking forward to the grand story that we were promised in many of the trailers leading up to the game's release. While I thought the original version of XV was just fine, fans understandably wanted more from the story. It's been about a year and a half since FF15's release, and during its first release year we've gotten numerous free content updates like added cutscenes and missing story threads, as well as paid DLC episodes starring the other members of Noctis' party. Earlier this year, Square actually released a brand new version of 15. Well, actually two new versions, FF15 Royal Edition and Windows Edition, which marks 15's debut on PC. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the new content Royal Edition offers and reviewing their features. And we'll see if these new features are actually worth your money. So, let's get started. I was really surprised at the amount of new content offered in Royal Edition. I'm glad Square didn't just bundle all the season pass DLC together with the main game and just resell it that way. They actually made brand new content for this version of FF15, which is really awesome and more than what most game companies would do with their re-releases. Royal Edition comes with a brand new first-person mode, which allows you to explore the world of EOS from a new perspective. Up close and personal, baby. I really like first-person view for just hanging out in towns and exploring in the field. Sadly, first-person view doesn't work very well during combat. As you guys probably know already, this game moves really fast during battles. It's almost impossible to keep up with what's going on. So yeah, I recommend just keeping first-person view to exploration. You guys remember the Regalia Type-D? I think the one thing... <laughs> yeah, I can never forget that. Anyway, Square added a new multi-part questline for the Type D, which you find the parts to build the vehicle and then eventually upgrade it later on. This questline also unlocks new time trial races set around Lucis. So now you can test your monster truck driving skills and unlock further enhancements for the Type D. I'm glad this was added because I really don't like when DLC is just given to you. I like to work for my upgrades, and having a small backstory to go with it is so cool in my opinion. More games need to do this. My favorite of the new features, and probably everyone else's, is the expansion of the final area of the game, the City of Insomnia. Don't worry guys, I'm not going to spoil this part. I'll just say that when you get to the end of the game, the entire lead up to the final boss has been greatly expanded, this time with a full city to explore and multiple new boss fights. A common criticism with the initial ending of 15 was that the game just kind of shuffled you to the final boss and felt like it wanted to end a lot sooner than players wanted it to end. Thankfully, these new additions and expansions to Insomnia give you way more room to explore, with new weapons and items to find, new areas to explore, and brand new side quests featuring a fan favorite character. They even managed to include something from the Comrades multiplayer into this ending, which is super freaking cool. But I won't say anything, you'll have to just see it for yourself. Insomnia isn't the only area of the game that's been expanded. Noctis and friends can now freely travel from Lucis to Altitia by way of the Royal Cruiser. That's right guys, now you have a boat and can explore the vast open sea. This sounds a lot more exciting than it actually is. Sadly, there's not much to do on your boat besides fishing and taking scenic landscape pictures with your friends. And hearing this line over and over again. Which do you think is faster? This boat or the regalia? Obviously the regalia. It's faster. This boat or the regalia? Obviously the regalia. I was really hoping this would play more like Wind Waker, where you can travel across the ocean and explore little islands and meet new people. I guess you just can't get everything you want in life. Not the most amazing addition, but still a cool little piece of new content. The final major piece of content is a new combat style called Armager Unleashed. In the base game, as you progress through the story, Noctis would eventually gain a power called the Armager. Activating it would spawn ghostly weapons all around Noctis, and attacking would result in Noct flying all over the place in an invincible state, decimating everything in his path. Armager was more of a panic button, last resort type attack. But now once you gain the Armager Unleashed ability, you have access to a much deeper combat system with button input combos, which is actually kind of surprising. Armager Unleashed lasts a lot longer than the default Armager, and also has four super moves that are mapped to the tech bar. So the better you do in a fight, the faster your bar will fill up, giving you more super moves to unleash on your enemies. Besides these major content additions, there are also a few smaller additions, like the Dossier Gallery, where you can review and learn about characters you've met during your adventures. There's also a data log system now, much like the dossiers, but for locations you visited. The game also lets you know when a new data log is nearby with on-screen prompts. 
There are also new smaller cutscenes, giving context to some of the more empty or confusing parts of the game. This is great because, like I said before, one of the major problems with 15th Story was that it felt kind of empty in certain parts. Some of that emptiness kind of persists through this version, but overall, the story is a lot better than the initial release of the game. Oh yeah, there's another small feature exclusive to the PC version. NVIDIA and Cell Photo Mode. It's really more of a boundary break tool. Shoutouts to boundary break. With this photo mode, you can really take the camera anywhere, and I mean it anywhere. You can go right off the map, up in the sky, or through a character's face. It's pretty cool for people who are really into that sort of thing. So now that I've talked about the new content, I'd like to clear some things up about how you actually get this new content. The physical release of Royal Edition comes with the base game of FF15, the Season Pass which includes all three character episodes and the Comrades multiplayer, and the brand new Royal Pack DLC. I'd say buy this version if you've never owned 15 or any of its DLC. It'll run you about $50 US. If you did purchase FF15 and the Season Pass, all you have to do is either go to the PlayStation Store or Xbox Marketplace and download the Royal Pack DLC. This costs about $15 US. And finally, we have FF15 Windows Edition. Windows Edition is exactly like Royal Edition, except it's just on PC. It also costs $50. I got Windows Edition because this version is the most different of all the releases of 15 we've gotten, with customizable graphics and future mod support. Also, it's just freaking beautiful. Well, if you can run it. So is all of this worth its price? Well, I'd say yes and no. If you were already a fan of 15, you'll probably love all of these new features like I did. But if you weren't the biggest fan of this game, I feel that the overall package of Royal Edition would still be lacking for you. The combat is still the same, and I feel the game suffers from a lot of boring side quests and other base game features that don't make a lot of sense. If you haven't played the game yet and are still interested in it, get Royal Edition and give it a shot. What's the worst that can happen? With all of that being said, Royal Edition feels like the game Square wanted to release originally. It sucks that nowadays a lot of dev teams don't get enough time to actually finish their games, but it is great that we at least got this fuller version of the game. Better late than never, I guess. It shows that the developers of FF15 really want to make things right and try to fix the mistakes of its initial release. It's crazy to think that if this game just had like two more years of development time, we probably would have gotten this more complete version of the game. Let's hope Square Enix paces themselves better for the next FF game. They probably won't though. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and hopefully it helped clear things up about the physical version and the DLC version of this new content. Let me know what you guys think about Royal Edition. Did you get it, or are you going to get it? Anyway, I'll talk to you next time. Later. Hey, this is Ray Chase. I play Noctis Lucis Kylum in Final Fantasy XV. I just want to say like and subscribe to The Sphere Hunter, because she's awesome.